Okay, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take out a pocket door and change it. They wanna do that for two reasons. They just want a new door, but also whoever installed it got a little too cute with this. This is too close together and it rubs and it also drags on the floor, which they're not crazy about. See, it stops right there. Whenever I'm installing a pocket door, I like to cut the hardware outside before I do anything so there's no mess and it's a lot easier. With pocket door hardware, the door slips on from one side or the other, and we can't tell which it is. Whenever I'm installing pocket doors, I always install it from the side. That's the easiest. It would be easier to work out here as opposed to in the bathroom. So I'll assume they put the door in from this side which means I'm gonna take off this side of the frame. If we're wrong, then we'll just have to take off the other side. I'm gonna show you how to take off as little as possible. Okay, so we have to take off the casing and we have to take off this trim and we're gonna to have to remove this piece of the frame. Now, a guy once said to me, you don't need to take off that casing, that has no effect. You're right, the casing has no effect on the door. But in order to remove this piece of the frame, I have to take off the casing because it's going to be nailed to that. I'm going to take it off in layers. We're going to take off as little as possible so that we create as little damage as possible and it's easier to put back together. We want to score this cleanly so we can pry it off cleanly. Bang it in there and work it a little bit. And as you can see, there's no way to get up in there. This piece of frame has to come off. So in order to get this piece of frame off, we have to take the casing off. Now you can see the frame ends right here. Same thing, the frame ends right there. And this is not structural, it's just cosmetic. It holds things in place. So what I'm gonna do is put a metal cutting blade on the reciprocating saw and just cut these nails out on each end and this thing will come right out. Mm. Now we have complete access to the wheels and the door. Now here's how this particular hardware works. Look very careful at that nut. You see there's a nylon white plastic clip to the left of it and underneath it. That prevents it from slipping off, but it's incorrectly installed. That should be under the bracket, not on top of it. And that may have been why the other one failed and it's rubbing on the floor. So when we put these back on, we're gonna put them on correctly. So I just poked it with my five-in-one tool and that clip came off. And now I should be able to pull the bracket off of that truck. With the door pulled out and I'm wrestling to pull this one off, you can see the top of the door is hitting this trim piece here. So once I get the door out, I'm gonna take off that trim piece. It'll be easier to put in the new door. And we've got the door out. Everything looks good, hardware's in good shape. So we'll put this back on the new door and we'll make sure the actual wheels are okay. It could go down a half inch easy and it could go up a half inch. So that's a good position. So with it in that position, we want to cut the door a quarter inch shorter than the floor. That way we can go up or down as needed. This is the highest part of the floor. I can see the floor is sloped and you can see it started to drag right there, the old door. So from the high point of the floor to the bottom of that bracket is 80 inches. So I'm going to cut a quarter inch off the door. The brackets back on. Make sure you pre-drill these. It's very easy to split the door and make sure the slots are pointing the way you want. It's taking off all the other trim. It's not necessary to get the door back in, but they will have to be moved in order to get the clearances that we want. So the homeowner wants it all off. And then after the door is painted, put it back on. Now to put the door back in, we're gonna start with the wheel closest to the pocket. And it's very easy. Just position it around here and then just Kind of lift your door, tilt it up till you can push it on there. Don't put on the locking mechanism yet because we don't know what we have to adjust. 
But once it's on there, then we're gonna guide it back into the pocket and put that one on. So you just guide it in like so. And once it's in far enough, you could push this one back and then position the wheel. Then you can just lift up on the door and pop it on there. There we go. So we have a gap here, no gap down there. So what we want to do is loosen this one and that'll drop the door and move that over. Let's see, as I loosen this, see, now the door is touching there and it's touching down there. So that's perfect. You can see that little space between the bracket and that nub and the lock should go on that side. But we can't do that because this is in the way. Now we're taking off that piece of casing and that piece of frame. I can get the wheel on and put the locks on properly. One part slides under the bracket, one part slides over the bracket. There. Now, now that thing can't move. Don't skip that part. I've come to repair pocket doors that got stuck inside the pocket because someone didn't put on that lock. Make sure they're pushed all the way on there in the center. Nothing's binding. Everything is lined up well. I'm going to put these frame pieces back on and then the casing. And whenever you're nailing around a pocket door, be mindful of the length of your nails and where you're nailing. Like I wouldn't want to put a two inch nail through here. And of all our casing, framing back on. Always check your door, especially after you've done nailing, make sure there aren't any nails in there. Now, after the homeowner has the door painted, the painters are gonna put all of these trim pieces back <laughs> on and hopefully they'll leave enough space so that the door doesn't rub against them. And that's how you do a pocket door replacement.